In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a different level of transparency based on the value of the bar. As you can see here, this large bar has a darker color, while this smaller bar has a very light or opacity or high level of opacity here. So let's start to explore how we can create dynamic opacity or transparency levels on the background color in Chart.js. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers' questions, which is how to have a background color transparency level based on value in Chart.js. So this question came from one of my other videos about how to change the color of the bars in a bar chart based on the index number. And if you scroll down here, you can see here a special thank you to Ravi Te Teja for asking the question. This is what Ravi asked. How to change the opacity of every column based on the data label? For example, the higher the data value, the um, more visible it becomes, and the lower the data value, the more higher the opacity or the transparency it becomes. So let's start and work on this. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to charges3.com, getting started. And in here, we're going to grab our default code. So I'm going to scroll down here, copy this chunk of code. And once I have this, and if you want to understand what that code does, make sure you watch this video here. I'm going to paste this in here. So once I did that, I'm going to cut out this, put in here the title, save this and refresh and there we are. So now we have this here. And what I want to do here is I want to only get one single color. So I'm going to just basically remove all the excess here. We don't need everything else. We only want one color to deal with. So if I save this now and refresh, you can see here everything is basically a red with a transparency red or a are a uh, red with slightly visibility. So what we want to do now is we're going to work on the background color, which is the most important one. And what I really want to do here is create a function for the background color, where we loop through every single value to see what the value is, and then make a calculation of that. And then based on that, it will give a level of transparency. So what we're going to do here is very basic, and I'm going to make a very basic formula, but of course you can play around with that. So what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to say a background color, because that will still be the part. But what we're going to do now is instead of just a uh, object, we're going to make it a function. This function will grab the C, and the C stands for the value that's all related to every single bar. So we get a lot of information of the bar. So let's do a console log just to show you this. So we put a comma here and just remove the space or just enter there, save this. And then if I refresh here now, nothing happens here. The background color just changes by default, but what more is more important is basically the information we get here. So you can see here what we get is a lot of information. If it's active, meaning if we are hovering, true or false, you see the data index, we get all the pixel information. But what is more important is basically here the raw data which gives us the number or the value. So what we're going to do here is basically the following. I'm going to say here a constant, and this constant will be our value. So what I really want is basically just grabbing this raw value here. So I'm going to grab this raw, but what we want to do is we say C dot raw. So once we have this, we have now the specific value here. So let me show you that C dot raw. And here I'll just comment this out, save that, refresh. Now we get all these values here. And in the beginning here, you might be confused why is this looping here or why is it repeating this one? Well, basically this is a default action here that's just looping through because of the animation in here. All right, so once we move over it, eventually it will grab us a certain value. So what I really want to do here now is start to change this. And what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to calculate what we call the alpha value. So I'm going to say a let alpha. And this alpha is based from the RGPA. And the alpha is the opacity or controls the opacity. So what we're going to do here is the following. Uh, we have this. What I want to do is for the alpha, we're going to make a formula. We say 10 plus value, whatever the value is. And then we say divide by, let's say 60. Of course, this needs to be changed based on your value so you can control that a bit more. And this is a basic item. Once you understand the logic of this, you can probably easily adjust, adjust to what is preferred. So then what I'm going to do here is the following. 
I'm going to return it. What I want to return is in because we need to concatenate. And what we're going to concatenate is basically the information here with a variable in here. So because of that, I'm going to use template literals, which means I'm using a backticks. So these are backticks, not single quotations. So I'm going to copy this exact value. But here I'm going to remove this, say here dollar sign to put a value in there, and then I'll say your alt. And once I have this and I save this right now, and I put a semicolon here, save, refresh, you can see here now we get a alpha value here. And this works nicely. Now you can see your base on the value. Of course, if you would reduce this maybe to to 20, you will see here you have different values. Of course, you also get this kind of effects here. I'm going to explain to you what happened here. So what we're going to do here is the following, because what we really need to do here is to understand how the alpha value works. So what I'm going to do here, console law, and all I want to do now is to grab the alpha value so we can solve our so-called issue here because this looks a bit buggy, but it's not. Don't worry, we're going to understand how it works. So you can see here the values. These are the values that we have from this alpha value. But remember, the alpha value in the RGBA is only allowed to be zero from zero up to one. So 100% visible, or zero means 100% invisible, or 0% visibility. So that's basically what we're talking about here. But you can see here the values are beyond that, which is 9, 1.4, etc., etc. This is what basically happens is it converts it, but if it's here, you can see here this is 0 0.8. If you move over this, no problem here. Here, this one is 0 0.95, which is still within range, no problem. But here... What happened here is basically it converts it into 10 or 0 0.1 instead of 1.1. So what we need to do here is to create a so-called filter. So we're going to build now a filter that will protect us that if it is beyond 1, we want to convert this into 1 by default. So what I'm going to do here is just a simple if statement. We say here if the alpha value that we have, the uh, let's make sure we spell it correctly, if alpha is beyond 1 or larger than 1, in that case, we'll say alpha equals 1. It's very simple. Once we did this, and this is the reason why I'm using a let value here, not a constant, because we cannot reassign it twice. This is very important. So once we do this and we save this and refresh, now you can see if we hover over it, nothing happened, except that maybe you might notice that if we hover over, we get this slightly hover effect, which is a slightly darker effect, but that's basically a hover effect. So that is basically what we can do if we do this here back on 60, and let's say we do this on 180, save that. Now we get all of these, all right, you can see all these numbers, which is beyond, but then here, of course, nothing happens. So with this, you can basically play around and loop through. What really happens here is it loops through and pushes every time the background color based on that. And we could basically do exactly the same here for the border color, exactly the same methodology, because there's the same logic. So we would copy this, Put it in here, and just indicate here, border color, save that, refresh, there we are, and now we have a border that is also nice transparent. And this is basically how you create a transparency level in your chart.js for the, for the bars. So if you enjoyed this video, and maybe you want to go even something more challenging that also uses a certain way of color play, I would highly recommend to check out this specific video here that explores how you can create a heat map very similar of GitHub commit, where the more commitments you do, it becomes darker, while the fewer commitments, it becomes lighter.